The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. I'd like to welcome everybody back to a uh, KevCam night class tonight. Uh, tonight, have Andrew uh, helping out with any questions that come along for you guys. Andrew, are you with us? Yep. And uh, Greg Payton to uh, make sure I'm not missing out anything for you guys. Good evening. To keep me on cue. <laughs> Um, I do see a lot of new names in here, so I'll go over um, the uh, housekeeping. Uh, we do use GoToWebinar for these night classes. Um, this does put everybody in mute, um, just to eliminate any background noise. Uh, but if you guys do have questions, there is a questions panel for you, and definitely ask those questions, and then Andrew will uh, um, let me know there's a question there, and we will answer your question right away. Uh, very laid back. Um, so don't feel like you need to hold your question to the end. And uh, these classes are solely dedicated for you guys, so definitely ask as many questions. And if you guys do have a suggestion on something that you would like to see, definitely send that over to me uh, via email, um, and I will get those uh, inputted in for the night class for you guys. So what we are going to be covering tonight is a little bit misleading of what the website said. So unfortunately, I thought we were doing the face mail tonight and not the tool library. So everybody that's here for the tool library, I apologize. Tonight we're going to be covering, we're going to be switching these up because I got everything ready for the face mail and not the tool library. So the tool library we will be covering on September 24th um, when I'm back in the office. We do these night classes every Tuesday night when I'm in the office, but unfortunately next week I will be in uh, Andrew's neck of the woods doing an on-site training. So, But with that being said, um, oh, one other thing is all the night classes are recorded. So if you guys go over to the Solid Cam University channel, there is a whole slew of information in here. Um, there's getting to be a lot of videos in here now um, after doing this for the last three years. So what we've done is set up playlists and inside these playlists, Mark has done a fantastic job of making some short videos in here. Um, we also have tip of the day videos that are under two minutes. And then as well as we have, you know, live cutting videos, um, the night class videos, everything all right here. So this one's a little bit sorted out, um, a little bit better for you guys. All right, so that being said, we will get going with uh, face mail here. So I'm just going to kind of clear out what I have here. Now, they've changed up face mail for you in 2019 to really simplify things um, even more. Uh, the face mail operation from 2018 and older got a little bit confusing just because there was um, multiple different ways to go about picking your geometry. So now what we've done is, or I should say development has done off of your guys' suggestion, is the face mill operation will actually look at your stock versus your target or your SOLIDWORKS model. Hey, Kevin, yeah. I don't know if you've got, you've got the KevCam night school screen oh. up. I don't know if it's intentional <laughs> or not, but uh, there, you go. We, there it is. Sorry, nice. guys. Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I'll, I'll go by Ronnie. I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> I just see that Ronnie wrote that. Um, well, <laughs> so uh, I guess you guys didn't see the playlist that I was talking about. So here's the playlist of everything that's going on. And like I said, if you go to Solid Cam University on our YouTube, you will uh, see every single night class, tip of the day, and uh, helpful videos, uh, general videos in there. Um, so now that you guys can see my screen, so we, we're going off of the stock versus the target. Uh, we have set this up to really simplify the face milling operation. So now when you go ahead and do a new face mill operation, all you have to do is pick a tool which has made things a lot easier. So what it's doing right here is it's looking at the stock boundary and it's gonna machine everything off with that stock boundary. So if we go to grab a tool and I got a tool already kind of preloaded here uh, cause I'm pulling off a template. 
Now, if I go to my levels, I can do by top of stock and by top of target, and the numbers will automatically fill in based off of my stock. Now, uh, if your stock is not uh, put on here correctly, you will see uh, a little bit of difference because like I said, it is all based off of that updated stock model. So we are just doing by top of stock is the top of the level, by top of target, which is our SOLIDWORKS model, and we are gonna be machining off 0.5 millimeters. Now, if you guys wanna change these around, you guys can come over here and do user defined and change it and you can put whatever numbers you want in there. Um, so you're not locked to anything here. Now, for those of you guys that are new, we do have the option to do equal step downs. Um, what this will do is if we are stepping down by a certain amount, what it will do is it will equally space those out to achieve that step down. So if we put a 0.1 step down in here and save and calculate, it's gonna equally step down 0.1. Um, the reason why this is in there is because what will happen is if we have a uh, 0.5 millimeters to face off and we're doing a 0.75, there gets to be that last little piece where it's just gonna take a really light shaving off to finish off that odd number. So by turning on the equal step downs, it now turns this into the maximum step down. And what it will do is it will equally slice that step downs uh, for you. Now, if you don't want to step down at all, all you have to do is we can just put this at zero and it will take it all in one cut or you can also put in your 0.5 millimeters based off of this number right here and it will do that so it's all in one cut for you. So, all right, so now what we'll do is we will go to our technology. Now they've added in here spiral. Um, it's been a very common uh, way of, uh, that you guys wanted to see in there. So they have implemented in the spiral option. We also have our hatch, which is gonna be a zigzag pattern. We have contour, which is gonna be more or less uh, kind of going there and just contouring the profile and stepping over as it's coming in. We also have the one pass. So if you're just doing, if your face mill is wider than this part and you just wanna take one single pass all the way through, very simple, easy. Now you'll notice as I change this up, this middle tab right here will automatically update. So right now it's set to one pass, but if I set it to spiral, it's automatically gonna pop over to the spiral options. So we can do a roll in, um, we can do the approach distance, a lot of different ways to really uh, customize your uh, face mill. Now, usually with face milling, um, at least what I found in the past is I get my one way of doing it. I got my feeds, I got my speeds set up just how I want it. <clears throat> um, then I, so I don't have to do all these options every time. What you guys can do is save this out as a template. Um, and we'll cover that later on in the series. But uh, so what we'll do is we'll save that as a template. So anytime I start a new face milling operation, it's already gonna have all these parameters put in there for me. So this is a real nice feature um, to have, but you get a lot of different options in here and much more options in the 2019 than what you guys had with the 2018 version. And like I said, this is all based off of your guys' feedback. Um, and if you guys do have ideas or something that you wanna see different, definitely let us know because uh, we can get those implemented in right away. Okay, so right now on our technology tab, we're doing a spiral. We are doing a overlap of 30% of the tool. Now, when it's set to spiral, we only get one option and it's just to do it one way. So if I just do a saving calculate, you'll see our path on there, but maybe I wanna go the reverse direction so I can come in here and switch it up. So now it will actually go the reverse direction starting in the center, working its way out. Um, 
with the complete Z level, if that what that is set up to do is if you have multiple different faces that you want to machine off, what you can do is um, the complete Z level is it will finish this entire part off to the the correct Z level, then it will move over to your other part. Um, if you don't have that turned on, what it will do is it will uh, machine this down to the specified area, your step down, then it will come over to this one, do that area, and then come back to the main part and do its next step down and then just kind of bounce back and forth. So if you guys do see some bouncing back and forth when you have two separate areas, just turn on the uh, complete Z level and it will machine everything off on this part first, then move, move over to this part right here. Now in here, what we can do is we can set up a floor offset for a finish pass. So if we wanted to do a nice light cut to get a, a, a real nice finish on a specific material or whatnot, we can put in there, you know, 0.1 millimeters and we can tell it to finish that. Um, or if you guys are using a high feed mill and that's your rougher, uh, you can do is just leave that unchecked and so it's automatically going to leave that 0.1 millimeters on the floor to come back with a different cutter to, to finish that off to get that look that you're looking for. Put that back at zero. Now, like we, we talked about spiral, um, we can do our roll in and our approach distance. Now, if we go to hatch, we have quite a bit of different options in here. We can change the angle of attack. Um, do we want this, you know, just to go back and forth this way, or do we want it at here? I'll just kind of show you. Do we want it at a 45 degree angle? Um, you can put whatever angles you want in there. Do we want to do a zigzag, um, or we can do from side to side or side to middle? Um, you can also extend your um, let's put this back at zero. Now, Kevin, while you're talking mm -hmm. about angles, um, can you go over the difference between a user-defined angle and the automatic optimal angle? So the um, the user-defined is going to be set up to, so if we do 45 in here, And let's kind of get a top-down view here. So we're kind of um, expanding out just as a general box. Now with the automatic optimize, if we turn that to 45, it's going to optimize based off of your stock. So right here is kind of the, um, uh, let's see, how do I say that? You got a word for me, Greg? Um, the, I guess the dumb way of going about it, where the optimize is going to optimize it for the fastest tool path possible. If that makes sense. Did I say that right, Greg? Uh, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> the dumb way. I could have popped in with that help on that tech, tech term there. The dumbass way to do this would be to do this. Uh, I love it. Yeah, so typically the user-defined angle is going to be the angle relative to the x-axis. So, like, if you put in 45 degrees there, you're yep. going to get a true 45 as if you're um, defining that angle in a Cartesian plane. Um, the automatic optimal angle uh, typically takes the longest side of the part and makes it parallel to that longest side. And then if you want to add an angle to it, it acts as a delta from that longest side. Let's put this at zero. So generally speaking, if you guys do like the hatch pattern, which um, seems to be a real common one, definitely have your set to optimal angle because like Greg was saying, it's going to 
it's going to be the smart way of going about it. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Okay. Um, your extensions, how far off the part do you want to go? Um, so right now we are extending 10% of the tool diameter going past. Um, if we need to increase that to more or less. Um, this one is something, um, it's defaulted to zero and I think they should have defaulted to 10%. So what's happening is this last pass that's going through right here is going to cut right on size. Uh, that will leave a, a small little line there. Um, I mean, in the perfect world, it would machine it all off, but we all know that uh, we don't work in the perfect world. So I would definitely put a 10% in there as well. So it's overlapping a little bit to compensate for that edge. So now you'll see it added an additional pass in there, but we're getting good overlap on that end. If we leave it right up to size, uh, like I said, you'll get that little line going through there, or especially if you have a, a nice radius on your insert, um, that radius will go right to size. And like I said, you'll get that little tiny lip right there. And like I said, once you have this all set up, um, definitely save the soda as a template. So you don't have to come back and uh, change any of this going forward. Now, when I am doing hatch, I do like to do my so right now we are set up to do sharp corners. Um, so if we look at this tool path for a moment in time, we are switching complete axes from the X axis to the Y axis. And we all know um, your machine will stop for a millisecond there and we get a little bit of jerkiness. So to reduce any of that jerkiness, what we can do is put a fillet on there. And what we'll do is it will do a nice smooth radius going all the way around so your machine stays in constant motion that entire time as it's going around now with advanced <clears throat> not much in there for you so if we go to contour um do we want our corners so as uh, let me just switch this over to contour real quick Let's see our path so right now the connecting uh, passes is just, it will go all the way around, come to a stop, move in, go around, move in, go around. What we can do is actually smooth out this area, uh, kind of like what we did with the hatch, and we can do a, uh, a fillet in there. And I got to do something smaller. Let me just do a loop here. I'm sorry. This is our external corners. So on the external corners, what it will be doing if we're set to sharp, it's just gonna go to the outside, instantly stop, move over in the Y axis. And like I said, that, that machine will stop for a, a moment in time. So if we can keep that constantly rotate or uh, moving um, with a G01, uh, that will eliminate any um, imperfections in the face milling operation. So right now we're set to loop. Uh, we can do, like I said, fill it. Now we'll round off our passes versus doing the square. Um, and we can do sharp. So if we're looking for that sharp corners uh, for whatever reason, looking for finish, uh, you can set it up to sharp corners as well. Um, you do have your direction if you want to climb cut, conventional cut. Here's the one uh, between um, your connection passes. So we can do smooth, which is going to add a little radius in here. So it's coming in and rotate, or not rotating, but moving and doing a nice arc in to the material as it's going through. Uh, we can, oh boy, my mouse is jumping around here. We can do rounded. So do a nice little S pattern for you. So a couple different options in here to kind of get the ideal tool path. And then uh, your extension, how far out do you want to go out from the part? Now, if we switch over to one pass, there's not much going on here, but we can do a uh, angle. And then we can also set it up as if you want to do a shift. So let's say I don't want to come right through the middle of that part. 
maybe I just want to offset it over, you know, one millimeter or two millimeters. Um, this is where you can actually offset it over. So, and then prior, I think what we had to do is do this as a profile operation for the, um, if we wanted to shift it over. We did have the one pass, but to be able to shift it over, um, we would have had to do that in a different operation. All right, in the link section. <clears throat> the link section is how do you want to approach the material? So right now we are set to do a tangent, but if we wanted to do like an arc, do a same calculate here, and then set up on one pass. So right now we're gonna be arcing into the material. Now I can change the parameters for all this information right here. So um, I can change my arc angle. Um, we can do the uh, radius angle there. Um, we can add an extension to go even farther out. So a uh, lot of different options for you guys there. Uh, you can also set the, instead of doing center, we can do a distance and we can put a distance of whatever you're looking for here. And as you're kind of going through these, there's a lot of different parameters in here, but if I uh, hover my mouse over this one right here, you'll see what it's actually looking for. So it's going to be that red distance right there. Uh, if we go to the arc angle, this is going to be our arc angle right here. So if we want to do like a 45, now it's just doing a small little arc in there. So a lot of different options and same as the lead out. Now, if we're looking for the same thing, we can just do the same as lead in lead out. Now, if you have multiple areas, again, uh, you can actually set your tool path up. So instead of going up to the clearance level, which is gonna be higher than your safety, uh, you can set it to safety. So we're not going up as high. Um, and same thing through the the two different passes. So if we were um, had the two different pads right here that we wanted to face mill off, um, we could just set it to safety distance instead of clearance. But uh, if you are doing that, just make sure you run it through solid verified, make sure you're not gonna wipe out any clamps, toe clamps or bolts or anything like that in there. Now, one other thing I wanna show is, and that's basically it for face milling in a nutshell. Now, let's say we are looking for a little bit more control and I'm not, I don't wanna go off of uh, the automatic recognition for the uh, the stock you still have the option to do the old way right here so let me uh get this out and i can come in here and do new and this is going to be basically what you guys have been used to seeing in older versions uh so we can come in here and do it based off a of model we can do it based off of faces or we can do a profile this is where a lot of confusion gets is all right well i want to do a off a of model and I go to click on my model, nothing's happening. So when you, if you want to get into the manual way, pick what you're looking for right here, and then come down and click define. And once you click define, now I can click on my model, hit the green check mark, and go from there. Now the nice thing about this is, let's say this one right here, I want to go off of the model, but I also have another pad I want to machine off. So then I can go over to profile and do define and add a profile in there just to profile off a small little piece that I'm looking to do. So a uh, couple, couple different options for you guys there. Um, but like I said, that is the, we got the, the manual way right here. And then we also have the uh, automatic way, which is based off of your stock. Now, as your stock changes, Let's say our stock is quite a bit larger going on the outside here, but we did a profile cut and removed a lot of that material. That's going to affect your face milling. So it's not going to be cutting any air because it's solely dependent off of your updated stock. And what I'm saying for updated stock here, let me just close out here, is here's your updated stock. So this is 
This is constantly being updated behind the scene for you. And as we go through and machine off, that updated stock will get smaller and smaller just because we're, um, we've are we machined it off. So it's the face mill is only gonna machine what's left of the stock for you guys. And if you don't wanna see that updated stock sitting there, you can just simply just turn it off. Now on the simulation, So we have our part there. Get this rotated around. And our face mill is gonna look just like a standard face mill. And this one, we're just doing one pass. So I know I need to come in there and we'll switch this over to a hatch and we will set our fillet. Slow this down for you guys. And just to make sure uh, we have all the material there, I can come in here and do an execute. And I can see that I'm up to size on this face right here and this face right here. Obviously, I can't get down in there um, to machine off the other areas because uh, I'll use a pocket operation for that. But um, this shows that we have faced off our material. Um, now, the stock target comparison is a great tool to use. You can see how much material is there. Uh, one thing I really like to do is come in here and just put something, a very small something in there. Uh, because if we leave this at zero, anything between you know zero and 0.125, is gonna show us orange or 0.125 and the positive is gonna show a little green tinge there. If I zoom in here, you'll see there's kind of a light green tinge going through there uh, by putting that at uh, one thou and decreasing your accuracy, uh, you can actually eliminate that. So I know that's helped out uh, a couple of guys in here that have seen that before, but now I do see I do have that little piece left over on that side. So this is where I was telling you about to do that side extension uh, right here. So let's put that at 10% now. And simulate. And it's gonna take one additional pass, but at least everything is completely faced off now, so. Am I missing anything, Greg? No, I think you uh, pretty well covered it. Not a whole lot in face milling, but uh, that is face milling at its finest. Uh, a lot of times you guys won't have to worry about motion control because this is going to be more of your four axis stuff uh, that we'll cover later on. Um, but like I said, once you guys have everything set how you want it, uh, you know, optimal angle. We got our 10% overlap on the extension and across using a fillet. Definitely save that as your template. And we can just do a simple uh, face mill uh, or label it however you would like that you're going to remember. And then when you go to open up that operation again, that template's going to be loaded for you. So, any questions from uh, our customers? Don't see anything there. Anything uh, that you guys would like to see? Quiet crowd. All right, well, what I'll do is I'll just end it off there. And if you guys do have questions, um, let me just put my, uh, if you guys don't know how to get a hold of me, um, <laughs> contact your account manager. It is just Kevin dot rankle r-e-n-k-l at solidcam.com um, if you guys do have questions definitely feel free to email me and my email address will be in the uh, the link of the youtube video as well um, or if you guys have suggestions on what you guys would like to see in the future let us know but uh, like i said we'll have to do a swap around for this one so on the 24th we'll be doing tool library uh, and we'll get you squared away on the tool library but
I'll stop rambling here and just want to thank everybody for attending the night class and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. And like I said, any questions, let me know and uh, I'll end it off with that. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. See you.